Hey guys, David Essel here, author, counselor, and I'm very glad to be a part of your world right now as we go through this insanity, right? I want to talk today about patterns in love, to move away a little bit from the direction that we've spent so much time in, and we've spent so much time in regards to the quarantine, the pandemic, I thought it was time to sort of like explore, right, and broaden ourselves. So if you know me at all, you know I'm going to ask you to start writing, like grab a pen and paper, okay? These little lives that we do or anyone else that does these lives if you just watch and you're not taking notes you're probably not going to pick up too much right mary claire great to have you with us jennifer great to have you with us so what i want you to do is understand this is every mistake that we make in love comes from a pattern so if we look at our past relationships there's always going to be a pattern that we're carrying forward now i could tell you a million stories of clients that at first disagreed with me i remember a number of years ago i worked with a woman from london and she was in her late 30s and she had never been married and she wanted children and she felt the clock was running out and so she contacted me said hey i want to work with you across the pond i'm not having a good guy a good time picking guys my my guy picker is off and that's usually what people say right when we have a series of relationships that haven't worked whether you're a guy or a woman we say you know i'm, I'm just picking bad people the real statement is is that i have patterns that aren't working and it's me it's not the people I'm picking, it's me. Because if I fix me, I might pick better people or I might know how to communicate through difficult times. Uh, Janelle, welcome. Hunter, welcome. Love you guys. So the very first thing we do with patterns in love is we say, write down the patterns that haven't worked. All you need to do is look back and see that, oh, in this relationship, I was codependent. I was afraid to speak my mind. I was afraid to do this. I was afraid to do that. Oh, in this relationship... I became dominant because I was fearful, you know? So we have patterns, right? Are we dating people that drink too much? Are we dating people that smoke and that doesn't work for us, but we're doing that anyway? Are we dating people that still have huge resentments against former lovers? See, these are patterns that are on you or on me. They're, they're not the other people. And the minute we can redirect our energies and say, okay, I need to raise my hand and say, I am the only common denominator in all of my failed relationships. Now we can start to get somewhere. So the exercise I want you to do today is to write down right after this video, you know, write down what are those patterns that aren't working for myself? Oh my God, you know, in 1997, I did a complete 365 day program on codependency because I was one of the most codependent men in this world. I would look for people to rescue. I'd look for women to rescue. I'd look for women that needed help raising children. I'd look for women that needed help uh, financially. I'd, you know, it was all women with low self-confidence and low self-esteem. You know, I'd say, oh my God, you know, through the work I do, we can not only date, but we can really make a great life together. I see the potential in you. You know, all of those dating people for their potential to change. If you fall into that category, write that down. You know, I date people for their potential. And then we say, what do I need to change, right? Going back to me. So we say, all right, well, let me stop dating people for their potential to change. That would be number one. You know, oh, he's a great guy or she's a great woman. They drink a little bit too much, but I know I can, you know, they've never really had someone love them that deeply. I know they'll change when I do that, right? They never had someone teach them how to budget, Oh, I'm great with finances. I can really help them. Do you see this? So when you write down your patterns, the purpose is, is to trigger your mind and to say, the next time I'm looking for a relationship, I need to make sure I'm not carrying my patterns with me. Uh, Rosalind, great to have you with us. Jackie, welcome. Debbie, welcome. So it's all about patterns. And when you see, and today we're just talking about the limiting patterns, right? Share this video. So many people want to believe they have bad pickers. So many people want to believe that it's not them. They just can't choose or find the right man or woman. I wish it was that easy, right? Um, another Debbie just joined us. Welcome. It's really about saying, what is it that I'm carrying forward many times from childhood where I'm codependent or I'm always angry or I'm afraid of intimacy so when someone challenges me, I fight back with anger instead of communication. Is that a pattern? You know, or when things get tough, I start to drink. Is that a pattern? When things get tough, I shut down, go into another space in my mind or my life. Is that a pattern? Write down these patterns, you know, and we can shatter them. Uh, definitely. 
Yeah, total codependency, Rosalind. You're right, you know. So so anyway, if I can help you, the website's talkdavid.com. You know, our books, we've got two of the biggest books, um, including, I think I got them both right here, that go heavily into patterns of relationships, focus, lay your goals, and then our newest one that's all about relationships, codependency. I don't know if you can see that. Love and Relationship Secrets that Everyone Needs to Know. You can grab those books on Amazon uh, or at our website, talkdavid.com. Also at the website, we have 14 online video courses, some about love, some about challenging attitudes, and they start at like $3. I mean, $3 for online courses, right? So go to the website, talkdavid.com. Uh, Teresa, welcome. Glad you're with us. And and share this. You know, like, let, let's get more of this country understanding that the real issue with relationships is patterns that we have, right? Um, and I'm going to leave you with this final note. In our new book on love and relationship secrets, we talk about intimacy. And the true definition of intimacy is not something that many people think about. When we think about intimacy, we think about, you know, sex and we think about uh, cuddling and we think about holding hands and that's all part of it. But the real definition of intimacy between two people is 110% honesty. If you have a pattern of being afraid to speak your mind, if you have a pattern of always speaking your mind without ever thinking about compassion and understanding and how you're saying it, right? We got to think about this because 110% honesty in a relationship is brutal. Why? Because if we're 110% honest, we might get judged, rejected, criticized, abandoned, right? I mean, there's some real negative end results to 110% honesty. But if you get to that place, I can tell you from 40 years of doing this work, it's amazing. Yes, you're going to have some difficult conversations, but you're not going to have blowout fights. It's just about, hey, can we speak about this? There's something that's been going on for two days that I need to talk to you about. <clears throat> or, you know, our intimacy has fallen off greatly. Let's sit down and talk about why that might be and what we can. In other words, do you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking about topics that are huge. Right now, honey, we're struggling with money. So let's sit down and really set a strong budget. And now when you say these things, I'm struggling with intimacy, we're struggling with money, we're struggling. You know, a lot of times if your partner isn't used to learning the new technique of 110% honesty, they can push back big time. You have to be able to sit in a non-emotional setting and ask them, would you be willing to go into true intimacy? Would you be willing to go into the space with me where we're both 110% honest? Would you be willing in your honesty to share it with me with a compassionate tone? Even if you're really upset with me, is there a way that we can bring down that energy of how we speak to each other? These are patterns that we want to change in order to find the deepest of loves. If I can help you, go to talkdavid.com or davidessel.com. As I mentioned, share this video. Let's get more people thinking in a powerful, positive direction, and we can turn the situation of relationships in this world around totally, okay? I'm David Essel. Have a great day. Bye now.